Tortora, wake up call with Dan Tortora inside of Utica Pizza Company's kitchen on 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York. If you want to call for catering as well as delivery and takeout, 315-214-3060. Once again, 628 South Main Street. You can always go to UticaPizzaCompany.com. And the Utica Pizza Company, it's a Utica thing line, is now in Wegmans. It is in Spira's, Nichols, Price Shopper, Beacon Skiff, Stewart Shops, all over the state of New York. And so we're very happy for that. And we want to thank Charlie, Dee Christina, and the entire team and all the work that they're doing with the It's a Utica Thing products. You can obviously buy it in store here as well. And it's the way to bring Utica Pizza Company home to you all the time. You can find out more at itsaUticaThing.com. So Phil Russo with us, the owner of Utica Pizza Company. Thanks, Good Sam. friend of mine, family over here. So as family does, they cook in the kitchen. And when it comes to being in an Italian kitchen, no offense to any other kitchen, but it tastes better, it smells better, it looks better. So, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, whether you're well, Italian or not, you say it, Dan. Whether you're Italian or not, you appreciate Italian food. We can say that. I would think so. Yeah. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to let Phil take it away. Let us know what we're making today. All right, so today we're going to make a uh, veal mushroom stew. Okay. Uh, mushroom stew is kind of a traditional dish, uh, Italian dish. Um, we do a little variation on it. We call it a veal mushroom stew, so we add a little bit of uh, veal top round into our dish. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a heartier, like, stew-like type dish. Uh, we put it over penne pasta. Uh, you can do it a lot of different ways. You don't even have to put it over a pasta. We just do it that way to kind of make a whole meal out of it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to go over pasta. You can put it over really any thing I've seen you can put over mashed potatoes, things like that. Um, but we do it over a penne pasta here. Um, so I'll, I'll, get, I'll get you started on how, how we do our variation of the mushrooms. Right, perfect. All right, so you're gonna start off with a little extra virgin olive oil and whole butter. Uh, I like to put a little bit of the butter in there. It gives a little bit of flavor uh, to the dish. Um, but the, the oil itself will help brown the, uh, the veal nicely in the beginning part of the sauteing process. So what I have here is a thin piece of uh, veal top round uh, that I've already pounded out and tenderized. Um, you really can use any type of veal for this dish. Uh, again, you don't even have to use veal. You can just use uh, your, you know, your straight mushroom stew recipe. Uh, this is just a variation. We've got a little bit of a meat in there. Uh, but you can use a cubed veal uh, top round. You can use a veal chuck, really. It doesn't matter uh, what type of veal you use. Uh, we got a veal top round here today. It's more of a tender cut. Uh, we just kind of like cut it up into like little pieces. We'll pop it right in this pan and we're gonna season it with a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. We'll get that going here on the flame. And basically you wanna get this, uh, you know, you wanna get this working and we're gonna cook it down to the veal lightly browns and then, uh, and then we'll add in our next items from there. sauteing these up to the mushrooms start to get a little bit tender which is just about there and then we're going to add in a sweet sherry wine glaze that pan nice the sherry wine's just a little bit sweeter gives it some nice flavor helps to glaze the bottom of the pan and get all those other nice flavors off the bottom of the pan we're gonna let that wine reduce by about half of the amount that you put in. Uh, which we're about there right now. And once we get to that point, we're gonna add in our meatless marinade sauce. I'm gonna take it over this way. Daniel, let it follow. 
for about an odd sauce right in here. Uh, I'm gonna use about seven ounces or so in there. Um, again, if you make homemade sauce, you know, you can just use that for this dish or even a good jarred sauce is good. Dan mentioned it's a Utica thing sauces. Uh, it, it doesn't get any more authentic to our flavor than that. Uh, you can get our meatless marinade sauce in any of those stores that Dan had mentioned. Um, and it's a great way to create a dish like this or even a homemade chicken riggy. Uh, we do have our riggy line, uh, but if you're somebody who likes to make your own riggies, uh, it's a nice base for the sauce to just dump right in and uh, it doesn't take you a whole three, four hours to make a sauce at home. Uh, you're getting that great flavor, homemade flavor right out of the jar. Uh, so once we've reduced that down a little bit, we're gonna wait for our pasta to finish off and then I'll show you how we're gonna finish the day. So what we got a few minutes here while we're waiting for the pasta to cook. You and I like to talk about a little bit of everything. It's where sports means life when it comes to wake up call with Dan Tortora. So as much as we're cooking and, and doing this, that, and the other, we gotta talk a little bit about what's going on with Syracuse. You've been a fan for a long time, born and raised in the area, born and raised in the area. Syracuse is nine and three. I'm gonna run down the list really quick. Not football. that we're talking about football. For football. Right. And not that not that I need to sell this to Phil, but to let everybody know the true ACC coach of the year. That <laughs> 1991 was the last time Syracuse started 4-0. The last time they had at least nine wins in a season was back in 2001 with Paul Pasqualoni. The last time that they were ranked in both the AP and the coaches poll simultaneously was 17 years ago. They've never been ranked in the college football playoff poll until this year. So, you know, it sets up to be a pretty amazing season. It's a big year. I mean, you can feel the excitement in the stadium. The fans are back into it, which is nice. I mean, the wave came back in the last game against Louisville. I, I wasn't there for that, but I did see it on TV. And uh, that's a good video. It, it reminded me of uh, the McNabb days, basically, where the games end. You know, the the yeah. dome would be sold out, and there'd be people going crazy in there. And well, I was going to ask you that. It's like, the, when you see, because to some people it's, it's trivial or maybe it doesn't mean anything, but I remember the, that when the dome was happy, the dome did the wave. And I associate the wave with happiness, being a kid, seeing them down in McMahon, Kevin Johnson, all that, Keith Bullock and whatnot. So when I saw the wave in front of me from the press box, I thought the fans are finally back. Is it fair that that's what you I would think so. I mean, they're showing up to the games. There's more, I mean, there's just more electricity in the air. Talk about the football program. Yeah. You know, for the last few years, unfortunately, and you know, whether it's been recruiting or what the issues, you know, coaching type stuff. I mean, you know, Diener, Dino's come in. He's done a really good job with the program. Um, we're putting points on the board offensively. I think we're playing a little bit of defense now, yeah. which is good. Yeah, I, 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 go. yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I think the crowd likes to see touchdowns, and it's nice that we're putting, you know, putting points on the board. Uh, yeah. You know, it's getting people back into the dome and getting excited for football season. That's kind of nice, you know. I mean, it's been a lot about basketball for the last few years, with football starting to make a nice comeback, and I think it's uh, it's good for the city, it's good for the school, yeah. and it's good for the fans. Well, it's funny because whenever the team starts to struggle on the football field, there's always a fan, and then it's followed by a slew of fans saying, "When's basketball season?" But now, with the up and down of basketball, I'm waiting for this year to be the flip of people saying, "When's football coming back?" Yeah, because that's how it feels. Well, uh, you know, we had a little, you know, we had a nice start with basketball being ranked right off the bat, which is nice. Uh, and beating the teams that they're supposed to. Yeah. Then they had to play teams that actually have some talent. Yeah. And that, was, that was a little bit tough road. And like but, you said, maybe a little maybe a little rocky start for us. You know, you, then you hear those comments, like you said, some of the people were saying things like, well, it's all right, don't worry, we're a football school again now. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. So We got a bowl again. Yeah. So, I mean, at least people can joke about it. Um, but, you know, it's early It's early basketball season. It's, it's, it's SU basketball in November. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of talent on the team this year, good recruits for, you know, for a change, uh, which is nice because we weren't able to recruit for a couple years there. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's it's nice. I mean, last night against Ohio State, you know, uh, we showed them a lot of different looks and lineups, and, yeah. you know, we played a little bit more team ball and started to come into our own. I think that uh, once we get into January, February, we're going to be all right for basketball. Yeah, and coming off the Ohio State win, obviously it's a big-time victory for Syracuse, something that they needed, and not only did they beat Ohio State, they beat the refs. So that's a good thing to say. Two, two and one. And I can 
say a rough game. I can say that. You know, Jim can't. He does. And he finds his way. But there's a way. There's a way to get across that. I can't get. You know, I'm just here, so I won't get fined. That's how I feel about this. <laughs> so before we hop out of the conversation, get back to the pasta. Eric Dungey has never finished a regular season at Syracuse in his first three seasons. This year, back spasms in the hospital. We think he's not going to do it for four out of four years. He comes back against BC. Three passing touchdowns. Three rushing touchdowns. Rex Culpepper said he healed like Wolverine to play in this game. He does not say die. Him and the seniors, the guys that have been through all this hell, said there's no way we're not going to a bowl. There's no way we're not going to extend our season. We're going to finish the right way. It's going to mean something. And he could not be kept off the field. What do you think about that? I think he's a great kid. He's got a great attitude. The fans love him. He's a fan favorite. He's an electrifying player. Yeah. He comes out, uh, you know, throws the ball for touchdowns. He runs the ball if he has to. Yeah. You know, he makes the necessary moves on the field to try to put himself in a position to win the game. Uh, we can't ask for much more than that. And he's a class act kid. Yeah. Uh, I think he's been been great for the program. And I think that it's it's awesome that he came out. You know, his senior year, like you said, the resiliency of, of all the things that happened to him in the past, and said, hey. You know, we're going to make this happen this year. We're going to a legitimate bowl game. You know, yeah. I, I want to get out there and make that happen. Got to give, got to give any athlete credit for, for that. Is he an NFL quarterback? Is he an NFL player? I don't know. I mean, I would say he's definitely in the running to be one. I mean, he definitely deserves a shot there. I think I he's mean, a third round or I mean, a third day, fifth to seventh round. Pick. Nowadays, it's, it's it's nowadays it's tough to say. I mean, you know, you get these first round guys that go in the first round. Sometimes they get injured. They don't materialize to to be that he first round player. You know, he's he's a versatile player. I think that you know if he if he got that chance in the NFL, you know, yeah, he's got the mechanics to be a quarterback, but he also has a lot of other you know running ability. He likes to hit. He's like a linebacker. Sure. So I think he's pretty versatile. You can maybe use him in a few different areas or put him in like a wildcat type position on certain teams and whatnot. He's the best wildcat out there. Yeah. A lot of these wildcat guys got arms for maybe 20, 30 yards, time, seventy. Yeah. So I mean, I, I definitely think he's got some value in the NFL stock. It just matters of you know if anybody else sees that value and they pick him up and give him a shot or not. But I think if you give him a shot, yeah. he's got that winning type attitude and that you know never going to give up type attitude, and that's what you need to be an NFL player. <laughs> Jacksonville. So I'm just saying, just put it out there. So and, and just kind of finally before we get back over here to the veal mushroom stew that we have here at Utica Pizza Company. As a fan, I know that you've been a fan no matter what. You show up no matter what. Some fans have, some haven't. What's the future look like? Andre Sisko is a true freshman. Tosh Harris is a true freshman. Nikeem Johnson is a sophomore right now. He'll be going into his junior season. And we got a great returning quarterback at DeVito. Yeah, Tommy DeVito. you got a lot of guys coming in. There's a lot of youth on this team. There's a lot of future of this team. There's a lot of guys in the secondary, the wide receivers, running back, quarterback, that are all young to the game. And they're really not losing much of it. Outside of Dungey and Strickland, they're not Personally, where I see the future of the team, I think we're only going further up. I mean, we've got a good coach. Uh, as long as they stick to the game plan, I mean, they're putting points Hashtag on the board. Hashtag Dino. they got to pay them, though. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah they, they got to take care of them. Any good coach needs to be, be paid. I mean, tell Dino to talk to Jimmy a little bit, and they'll figure it out together. Yeah, yeah. you got to give them at least $3 million and go up. I mean, that's, that's, I don't think you can keep the But, yeah, I mean, as long as they stick to the game plan, I mean, they got a lot of talent returning, got a lot of yeah. youth on the team. You know, the game plan seems to be working. Uh, I say just keep going with it. I think the program can only keep going up. That coming from Phil Russo. We're getting back to the pasta here just more. All right, so our dish is pretty much finished off here. Uh, we got our sauteed veal, mushroom, sweet peppers, and our sherry marinade sauce. Uh, we blanched off some fresh penne pasta. Uh, I like to throw that penne pasta right in. Uh, any true Italian will tell you the best way to have a pasta dish is to put the pasta right in the pan with the sauce and make sure that all the pieces of pasta are coated good. Um, Last finishing touch, I throw a little Pecorino Romano on there, some grated Pecorino Romano. It's important to get a good cheese, like we always say, uh, in the Italian kitchen. You know, you got to have a good Italian cheese to finish the dish properly. Uh, so don't be shy on that. Uh, we're going to get that in there. We're going to work it all around, make sure all of our pasta is evenly coated with the sauce and whatnot. And then we'll be ready to bring it over and plate it up so Dan can give it a little try since he's never had veal mushroom soup. So here's my favorite part of the video where I get to try the food at the end of it all. It's the first time that I've had veal mushroom stew. So drink that in a little bit here, folks. And now it's my turn. Let's see what this tastes like. I'm trying to get a little bit of everything. Some veal, some mushroom, pepper, some macaroni. Got a good flavor. 
flavor to it. Yeah. 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 There you have it, folks. Peel mushroom stew right here at Utica Pizza Company. Amazing. That's good. See, I like the Riggies, but that's got its own flavor. Every dish here is personal. It's different. They might feel like they're from the same family, but they all have their own personality. That's what I love about it. Utica Pizza Company, just like a true Italian family, 628 South Main Street in North Syracuse, New York, 315-214-3060 for takeout as well as delivery and catering. Go to UticaPizzaCompany.com to get the menu and so much more. And the It's a Utica Thing products, the sauces, the Madana, the Ricky sauces, as well as the tomato pie, and so much more available at Wegmans, as well as Price Chopper, Nichols, Spiras, Beacon Skip, Stewart Shops, and so much more. I want to thank Phil Russo for being a part of it as well, for making awesome food as he always does, and for doing everything that you guys do. For Charlie, for Phil, and the entire team with Utica Pizza Company, and it's a Utica thing. Thank you for bringing the homemade food to us here at Utica Pizza Company, and in those jars, and in those beautiful tomato pie boxes that we get as well. You did. It's not easy to do, but these guys find a way. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the veal mushroom stew, folks, once again, I'm taking this home. you got to come get your own. 628 South Main Street, North Syracuse. We'll see you soon.